Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Pisces New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. As always, we come together this time to bring our minds and hearts in unison, meditating for the common good. Today, the topic for our reflection and meditation is dissipating the fear of death. The work of the this project started last October, even though it continues the work that we've been doing, meditating on the thought forms for sustainable development goals. Through this work, we meditation for the common good work, we expand that focus and learn together, working as a self-organizing community, self-organizing group. Today, after our meditation, we will have a open floor brainstorming session, generating ideas for the next cycle of the meditation for the common good. So we invite you to stay today a little bit longer and together envision our next phase working together. And now I invite Rebecca to sound the purpose of our work. Thank you, Alexander. Our purpose in this project, Meditation for the Common Good, is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation, which focuses group intention for the common good, brings spiritual laws and principles to life, and magnetizes spirit-saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. In this month of Pisces, with our topic of dissipating the fear of death, we're working on the mutable cross, which we're using in this project to explore topic areas related to harmonization and right relationships. So we connect with the sign of Pisces, the sign of the two fishes bound together symbolizing the captivity of the soul in form. As we seek to support humanity to expand understanding of death, we hold open the gateway of Pisces, which links together endings and beginnings. And within the waxing tide of the moon, we hope that our meditative offerings will flow forth to enrich the evolution of human consciousness. As we draw together around this intention, I hand over to Tracy who'll lead us in aligning through the naming circle. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, 
we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and the action group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Rebecca. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Hood calling in from the Sunshine Coast on the east coast of Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Alexander. Greetings again. I'm Alexander Colin from Brooklyn, New York, in the United States. Welcome. Birgitta. Greetings. Birgitta Helena Rasmussen from Slagelse in Denmark. Welcome. Francis. Good, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Francis Gadet calling in from Victoria, British Columbia, on the west coast of Canada. Welcome. Martine. Hello, this is Martine Dupont from Belgium. Welcome. Daniela. Daniela. Welcome. Alice. I'm Alice from Lisbon, Portugal. Welcome. Anne. And please unmute yourself. Anne Harley, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Aneta. Aneta Lufra from Sorø, Denmark. Welcome. Brad. Hi, this is Brad calling from New Paltz, New York, USA. Welcome. Karsten. Hi, it's Carsten and Dorothy. We are calling from Heisley, the northern of Germany. Welcome. Daisha. There we go. Daisha Moss in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Diane. Diane. 
Okay, and please unmute yourself. Welcome. Dot. Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Welcome. Eleanor. Can I know, please unmute yourself. Greetings, everyone. This is Eleanor from Sweden, from the east coast of Sweden. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. And there seems to be a problem with the sound. Yes, we can hear you, Jillian, but probably you cannot hear us. Welcome, Jillian. Helen. Hello, this is Helen, uh, linking in from Hertfordshire near London in England. Welcome. Joe. Greetings, everyone. This is Joe calling in from Washington, D.C., on the east coast of the United States. Welcome. Catherine. This is Catherine calling from Northfield, Minnesota, USA. Welcome, Kim. Kim, New Zealand. Welcome, Lynn. Good morning, everyone from Tucson, Arizona, USA. Welcome, Maggie Joan. Good evening, everybody. This is Maggie in Manchester, England. Welcome. Margot. Hello, everyone. Margot Rush calling in from Victoria, British Columbia, on the west coast of Canada. Welcome. Marguerite. Marguerite, please unmute uh, yourself. I, I, sorry about that. Hi, everyone. This is Marguerite Nichols in San Diego, California, in the USA. Welcome. Martha. Unmuted. Greetings, everyone. Martha Gallahue from uh, New Jersey, USA. Welcome. May Lee. May Lee, please unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Miley from uh, Gostad west coast of Sweden. Welcome. Pat. Pat, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Sebastian. 
Hello, this is Sebastian Amseldus from Sweden. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Tia. Hi, this is Tia Clark, and I'm calling in from Rockville, Maryland, which is in the DC metro area of the D of USA. Welcome. Vicky. Hi, this is Vicky and I'm calling from Olympia, Greece. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. And as we draw together now to welcome our action area group for today, um, we just acknowledge that the action area group and other interested meditators and maybe um, some or many of you on this call gathered to contemplate this topic of dissipating the fear of death at the time of the full moon of Pisces. And the impressions generated from that work at the full moon time have been held and brooded upon um, over by the action area group um, and, the, and other subjective meditators during this preparation phase for the webinar up to our time now following on from the new moon. And um, the action area group this month, as we heard in the naming circle, is um, a rich combination of people from Canada um, and Belgium, Denmark, and um, USA, Ukraine. So we we welcome them and we open ourselves to receive the impressions stimulated by their contemplations and experiences around this important topic. Over to you, Action Area Group. My sense of statements are from Esoteric Healing and from Esoteric Psychology, Volume 2. The Law of Attraction 
governs the process of dying as it governs all else in manifestation. It is a principle of coherence and it is a major coordinating principle within all forms. But if it is the principle of coherency and the cause of integration, it is also the medium through which restitution is brought about and by which the human soul is periodically reabsorbed into the overshadowing soul. Accordingly speaking, any process of evaluation or of raising up automatically involves death. This death affects the atoms in the organs involved and causes the preliminary stages of ill health, disease, and disruption. Because death is nothing but a disruption and a removal of energy. When the science of the transference of energy from a lower center to a higher is understood, then light will be thrown upon the entire problem of dying. And the true science of death would come into being, liberating the race from fear. from Treatise on White Magic, page 499. It's interesting here to note that death is governed by the principle of liberation and not by that of limitation. Death is only recognized as a factor to be dealt with by self-conscious lives and is only misunderstood by human beings who are the most glamoured and deluded of all incarnated lives. The time for our reflection on the death and dissipation, the fear of death, uh, is linked to sign of Pisces the last sign in the zodiac, which closes the cycle and prepares us to the beginning of the new cycle. As we know, Pisces, one of the keynotes of Pisces is death and liberation. The esoteric ruler of Pisces is Pluto, the god of underworld. And we know that the energy of Pluto destroys the crystallized forms, but never the life within. Thus, by destroying the form aspect, it allows the life within to be released to the new fully form of service.
in the esoteric healing decay it gives us several reasons of fear behind the fear of death first a terror of the final rending processes in the act of death itself second horror of the unknown and the in definable third doubt as to final immortality fourth unhappiness at leaving loved ones behind or of being left behind five ancient reactions to past violent deaths lying deep in the consciousness six clinging to form life because primarily identified with it in consciousness and the last one old Iranian teaching as to heaven and hell both equally unpleasant in prospect to certain types reflecting on the fear of death I realized that this sense of um, unknown, the sense of this void that awaits us there behind that veil, it creates that uncertainty, which to some degree is similar to what been happening to European immigrants abandoning their home countries for the new world. It's known that in Ireland several centuries ago, there those who were embarking on the ships to cross the ocean were considered dead for those who left behind as the veil of separation was such unpenetrable and that journey through the distance created the same illusion of separation through unknown as the the illusion of separation created by death and same as we several centuries later now easy communicate with each other across the ocean and oceans recognizing the illusion of separation by distance the same recognition of the illusion of separation created by death will be dissipated by recognition of the fact of the soul as direct experience as we as uh, individuals and as uh, humanity a whole, we shift to the level of soul consciousness, where we recognize that the death is normal part of our soul experience, of our soul journey on this planet. Then this fear of unknown will just go away.
Decay says that uh, death is the most habitual experience that we as humans experience in our Earth journey. And as we recognize that and hold that thought in our consciousness and share it with those around us, talking calmly about topics of death as something that's on one hand inevitable, on the other hand is habitual process, then the fear of death will start fading away. Through knowledge and understanding, fear of death is dissipated. The following describes the psycho-spiritual stages of dying, based on the research of Dr. Kathleen Dowling Singh in her book, The Grace in Dying. Death is a vertex of great magnitude, catapulting our waking consciousness into unfamiliar dimensions of depth. Characterized by fear and turbulence, it is a time when the mind attempts to escape the death sentence. When feelings and thoughts are chaotic, as we witness the progressive removal of the masks we have worn. Each mask in some measure signifying a way in which we have been hurt and a pose we have adopted to manage any further pain of the same nature. This passage began with a terminal prognosis and ends with the final dissolution of the personal consciousness. In anger, we are brought to our knees, our lower chakras pleading for life. Depression ensues, outer stillness, silence, aloneness. Eventually, as truth sets in, acceptance and then surrender. The transformative process takes hold and the identity structure of the self begins to melt into a deeper, more elusive consciousness of the ground of being, God consciousness. Then comes a sense of self's immersion and healing in the power of spirit. Sleep patterns change and with increasing frequency comes the transformative sleep of the chrysalis. We begin to recognize our own essential nature, which is love. Slowly, the sense of self begins its spiritual integration into the most subtle and sacred dimensions of life.
primal repression starts to crumble. A time of remorse, guilt, and repentance is followed by resolution, self-forgiveness, and peace. Fear and dread dissipate in a profound moment of healing. And we behold the miraculous and the sublime. The dissolution of life continues in earnest and duality begins to be recognized as illusion. Our breathing pattern becomes short inhalations and long exhalations, heralding the emptying out of all that we no longer need. In the words of Hildegard of Bingen, I am a feather on the breath of God. We have entered the land of boundless awareness and grace. The experience of finally relaxing the contraction of the fearful separation and opening to spirit as our own radiant splendor. Natural goodness now flows from us. Love appears to be the last connection the dying have with the world of form. We become expressive vehicles for the power of spirit. And as we merge with our true essence, all questions of self's worth spontaneously melt away. Love pours into us, out of us, through us, grace comes at the end of suffering and illusion. In the reality of psycho-spiritual consciousness, we move into dimensions of joy and unit of life in which we experience the miraculous gift of God. And so it will be. Hello, everybody. As for me, the law of rebirth and the recurring death and life cycle has become a fact, not a belief. A fact based on inner conviction and insight and experience of serious disease twice and on some recollections from the past. Uh, under the law of rebirth or of cyclic opportunity, this great natural law on our planet, it is the soul which reincarnates in forms, life after life, 
hence the name reincarnation. The cyclic ebb and flow, as DK mentioned in several passages, among others in Treatise of White Magic, as Alexander said, is a normal and recurring process. Physical death is as normal as birth. Death under the law of disintegration is the result of the will of the soul. And as is mentioned in DNA, the physical body is relinquished. Eventually, it has to be the result of the united will of the soul and the personality. And that, when it happens, there will be no fear of death, as death will be an understood process. Our essential immortality will be demonstrated and realized to be a fact in nature, and death will lose its terrors. The continuity of consciousness will be an established fact. If we look at nature, we see this law of cycles. Four, an event will take place and a revelation be given to the race, which will turn hope into certainty and belief into knowledge, as stated in Treatise of White Magic, page 500. The Christ, also called Lord Maitreya, the Lord of Love, will emphasize more than before the fact of the soul and the constant return of the incarnating soul to the school of life on earth. In this continuity of consciousness, the inner man, the soul, the higher self, is more important than the outer garment of the soul. Instead of the word to die, the expression one passes away, meaning one left, indicates a kind of departure. One went to another realm from where from one will come back. One is simply entered into fuller life for a time. And as Alice A. Bailey says, death is the great adventure. Death also obeys the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice is also the law of death in the subtle bodies. We die to our glamours and illusion, which is a gradual disintegration of concrete forms and the sacrifice to the evolving life. It destroys any form in order to release. Obeying the law of sacrifice of the lower self to the self or soul is an ongoing process in everyday life. For example, that of personal desire of any kind. To end and to highlight what fear and fear of death, which is the greatest and sometimes unconscious fear, I will quote some disciple of the ages wisdom. First from Krishnamurti, where there is fear, there is obviously no freedom. And without freedom, there is no love at all. We have literally dozens of fears. Fear of death is one. And is it possible to be completely free of fear? He added that time and thought are factors of fear. Thinking brings fear. Another quote from Overcoming of Fear, chapter 10, in my transmission number two from Benjamin Krem. Fear of death, I suppose, is the greatest of fear, so strong that we don't think about it, but pushed it down to the back of our mind. It is the result of our conditioning, the fact that we separate death from life. All fear is the result of thought an action, a movement of the mind. And the last from the Agni Yoga, the fear of death, as all fears, I would say, shuts the gates of knowledge. So reading Krishnamurti, Bailey, Benjamin Krems, and others, I suppose, it seems one way of dissipating the fear of death, as with any fear, is to observe without reaction, 
to practice detachment. And as they say, be the observer and the fear will die of attrition. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. We are the living bridge between humanity and hierarchy. We open our group field to the energies of Pisces. Sensitivity, compassion, spiritual responsibility. Pisces distribute the sixth and the second ray. The sixth ray, the highest light control.
the second ray, I see the greatest light. The light of Pisces is the light of the world. It is the light of life itself. And it ends forever the darkness of matter. The light of the world. We stand in our circle as one heart and we hold our group chalice in the light as we offer seek thoughts participating the fear of death. Identification with the one life, realizing that there is no separation. Alexandra. Death is the most habitual experience of the soul's journey on earth.
Francis. It's because you believe that you are born that you fear death. Who is it that was born? Who is it that dies? Look within. What was your face before you were born? Who you are in reality was never born and never dies. Let go of who you think you are and become who you have always been. Martin. When we know ourselves as a soul, an immortal being, it will help to dissipate the fear of death. We lift the group chalice towards the light of Pisces. May the spiritual hierarchy bless the vision of dissipating the fear of death. So we'll just take a little more silent time now to absorb those impressions. And there is a link available um, in the chat if you would like to put your impressions down for the community on the impressions board.
And as we come back into physical body, um, we warmly open the floor to for verbal sharing or audible sharing of impressions as well. So if um, anyone has anything you would like to share, please unmute yourself. Um, raise your hand if you're having any difficulty um, or you can type impressions also into the chat box if you would like to share them that way. Alice, please yourself. Thanks. No, Alice, thank you, Sasha. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for this sharing. It was very uplifting. Thank you. And I was here listening and uh, something about Pisces came to my mind. I was thinking about the rulers, Jupiter and Neptune. And then, like Alexander said, on the esoteric ruler, ruler Pluto. And with these three, we can form a circle. It's like a synthesis of energies. And I was thinking about Jupiter as life. Neptune as love and Pluto as death, but not the death that destroys the, 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 the essential, the death of the form, so that we can be born again and again start a new cycle of life. So there is no end. This is in continuous motion. And we just need to be present and aware. And um, like in the mantra of unification, remember that the souls of all are one and we are one with them. So if we connect with the soul aspect, we surely can forget death and see it as a continuous process of living. Thank you. Thank you,
several people who joined the meeting uh, later. Uh, today is the daylight saving time change in the Northern America. And uh, so for those outside, the time is not regular of our meeting. And there was uh, Yoke asks if this session recorded. Yes, the, uh, as always, it's recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Alexander, and uh, thank you, Brigitte, and and Francis and Martine for a very comforting and loving uh, atmosphere that you set up for us for this meditation. Um, as we were meditating, I just had a visual of a fountain ever flowing and ever renewing itself. And uh, it was very apropos to the life and death cycle and the continuous flow. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you, Tracy. I've been a witness to transfer to another site, the passage across the veil twice in my life. And both times very close people to me who were making this transition. And it's an experience that's difficult to put in the words. It's definitely something that expands our limits of perception of who we are. And part of that experience was that death is simultaneously it's an illusion and the reality it's illusion in terms that state there's definitely sense of liberation and there was experience of this soul that rejoices the process and really fights hard to 
leave the body in that case was the body that was deeply sick with the diseases and so the soul that strives to uh, come free and the same time the sense of reality of that that the death is real but it's real for the elementals the physical etheric emotional mental those elementals they struggle and fight hard to keep the life within because for them death is the reality that's it and so that dual nature of death brings the question of identification what do we identify with? What do I identify with? Do I identify with the life that wants to be free? Or do I identify with the vehicles of elementals that's been home for me for such a long time? And as we talk about the dissipating the fear of death, there's, I think those two recognitions they will be with us for a long time with us as humanity because there will be those who identify with life and those who more identify with form and as we become more identify identify ourselves more with life we need to be clear about that and as i said before talk in simple words about that and be calm about that and radiate that clear identification. Thank you, Alexander. I was just uh, thinking about something that came to me. Uh, you were discussing about the elementals and the ability to release that. And for someone who has some deeper or esoteric knowledge, we can understand that. But I think of um, the general average man and humanity in general and how they, I, I've noticed within the last 10 years things that have been occurring that are helping to hopefully comfort and dissipate some of the fear for um, average man that doesn't really have the knowledge that we're so so privileged and gifted to have at this point. And one of the, there's actually two things that have been occurring. One, I've noticed uh, a lot more near-death experiences being shared and uh, published in books and shared on programs and different things for the general public. And the other thing is the um, reincarnation, which is assuring people that uh, this is not the end. And there's many people that are coming in now with the continuity of consciousness from their previous lives. And they're sharing it. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the one about the little three-year-old boy with the uh, he was a pilot in World War II and uh, flew a Corsair airplane. And uh, they had that on, this was years ago, on uh, Good Morning America and the different programs. Um, but there are many people that are being born right now and uh, within the last several years that are remembering past lives. So I think for um, average humanity, you know, just the average person, uh, for them just even hearing it is planting a seed. So I think uh, somehow that veil is starting to dissipate just a little bit. And I just wanted to share that. Thank you.
Thank you, Tracy. Dot, please unmute yourself. Mm, thank you, Alexander. And yes, thank you, Tracy. And thank you for the grace, of everyone who's participating and offering of this particular webinar. It really touches me, Alexander, as you shared about identification. And while we know that, uh, it seems that the group of world servers is now living that. We are experiencing that identification with, I'll say, reality. And I, it made me think of um, Wellesley Tudor Pohl, who, instead of using the term death, always used the term withdrawal. You know, he, he or she withdrew. And so I kind of like that. But the thing I'd like to just say briefly is in a call uh, earlier this week with Antonella, when she was talking about this year, 2021, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that actually inaugurated what we are experiencing this year and, and the opportunity for the new group of world servers to really come together in unity uh, as we are in this moment, in the synthesis of this very moment. And that Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius actually um, bring us this year and so many planets in Aquarius to the point of realization of 2021 as the prototype, the prototype year or prototype cycle for the entire new era. That has really landed in consciousness. And I think as many of us are speaking that, realizing that, and we infuse the field, Tracy, as you were just saying, the veil's thinning, we have the shared responsibility and yes, the, the privilege and honor really of infusing the field uh, globally and in fact, serving cosmically. So gratitude to everyone. Thank you, Dot and everyone. I'm just um, seeing a comment here from Gillian, um, which I'll read. She says, I read that Master DK said that when we are sufficiently enlightened, we will be able to choose the time of death. I wonder what his feelings might be about legal euthanasia for a person whose death was prolonged and difficult, but inevitable. Thank you for that question, Joe. And I think it's it, within the limits of, of time limits we have now, it's, we won't be able to share much of that but i suggest we consider this question uh, as one of potential topics for our further exploration together through the meditation for the common good so it's maybe on one of our next cycles we could reflect continue reflection in the topic of withdrawal and uh, transition through the veil and share on that. And saying that, I uh, invite us to turn our eyes back to the quality of Pisces that ends one cycle and begins the next one. And as we wrap up uh, our today's conversation, I invite us together to reflect on that next cycle of our work together. 
in the meditation for the common good. But for those of you who has to uh, leave, it can cannot stay uh, longer. I just, as usually at the end, I want to uh, invite you to come join our coming webinars. And um, the list of coming webinars uh, now on the on the screen. just want to uh, bring your attention that this month because of the change or the daylight saving time in many countries in different uh, um, weekends so there might be some confusion with time so uh, i bring your attention that all our programs now shift uh, to 6 p.m gmt So I invite us now to shift to the open space or open uh, space and to reflect on the common good. What is common good and what new topics or same topics we can bring forward for our reflection through these cycles of our uh, group meditation into the focus. Just want to remind that uh, through this work, we bring focus to three themes uh, through uh, astrological crosses. And in the cardinal cross, we invite us to reflect on any topics related to topic to uh, what decay called cleaning the house of religion and politics and which we can interpret as the respons leadership responsibility on the spiritual level and on the material level uh, leadership responsibility to take charge for what seeks to manifest and to help humanity to go forward and through the science of the fixed cross we bring our focus to the topics related to uh, sharing and creation of the new economy based on the principles of sharing And through the science of the mutable cross, we focus on the theme of right relations and establishing right relations on all the levels, starting from our individual, family, and community, and all the way to international level, establishing the measure of peace and right relations on all the levels. So let's just reflect for a few minutes on what topics we see need our urgent meditative attention. what human needs we can serve.
And as we hold our meditative chalice in the center, we invite us to share. Just please unmute yourself or raise your hand and share your thoughts. Catherine, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, it just popped into my mind. I would like to see the group do something about the etheric body. As I seem to recall um, DK talking that that would be a very important step for humanity to have awareness of the etheric body. I don't know which of the crosses it fits into, but thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Definitely a very interesting topic. And Marguerite, please unmute yourself. Um, uh, please try to uh, unmute yourself again. I did not. Uh, I did not put my hand up uh, intentionally. No worries. Hi, this is Tracy. Um, I was just thinking about what Catherine said about the um, awareness of the etheric body. And uh, I think that's a, a really nice idea um, because we're doing more of the esoteric type work, um, whether it be leadership and governance or resource and sharing relationships, harmonization with all the crosses, cardinal fixed and mutable. Um, something we might want to consider is in each of those categories working on um, the etheric body of that particular subject for humanity and the planet um, whether at, you know starting with the etheric body which DK mentioned was very important we could also um, look at things like the uh, astral body and the mental body of you know, the topics or the, yeah, the basic topics or themes that we're looking at um, and actually going to those levels um, or just as we did for dissipating the fear of death or dissipating, you know, whatever it is that we're looking to help either release or, or bring in for example. So just wanted to thank Catherine for that because I thought that was uh, that was pretty profound. Thank you.
I'm just thinking, it's Rebecca here, um, that this this topic um, of the etheric body has, and what Tracy's saying about um, all our vehicles um, and, and how they relate to the um, areas that we were wanting to consider for the common good. Um, it, it takes us into a deeper contemplation of what is the need, what 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 is needed for common good at this time. Um, and I don't have the answer in terms of topics, but I just um, feel that that might be a useful question for us to to help us come up with or not come up with, but actually um, apprehend and receive the um, ideas that might need to come forth. So just thinking about what what is the deeper need um, for, what is the deeper need for that will support um, the common good at this time? Martha, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, presenters. The word came to mind, cherish, that you provided a conversation. We can cherish and uh, feel liberated by. It was a beautiful job. I raised my hand in terms of thinking about the upcoming webinars and two thoughts came to mind. One of them uh, is a term that's known in the exoteric world called servant leadership. And in response to their urgent need today, <clears throat> it could be a topic for consideration. And the other one was the um, idea of the emerging new world religion um, in the context of the reappearance of the Christ. The, there's a beautiful poem by Rumi uh, called The One Song. And I've not been successful in uh, sharing it with you. Um, so I will put it once I get it uh, uh, correct, let me see, let me read it to you. Um, the song has to do with the, the idea of religion. All these religions, all this singing, one song, the differences are just illusion and vanity. Sunlight looks different on this wall than it does on this wall, and a whole lot different on this wall over here, but it is still sunlight. We have borrowed these clothes, these time and space personalities from a light, and when we praise, we put it back in. Just as one man can be a father to you, brother to another, and uncle to yet another, what you are searching for has many names, but one existence. Stop looking for one of the names. Move beyond attachment to names. Every war and conflict between human beings has happened because of some disagreement about the names. It's such unnecessary foolishness because just beyond the arguing where we were all one people, there is a long table of companionship, beautifully set, and just waiting for us to sit down. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Annette, please unmute yourself. This is Annette Lufler. Um, I'm taking some uh, education uh, online and um, 
he is talking about uh, he uh, when we are um, restrict, restricted uh, physically uh, because of uh, the corona uh, problem, we can meet in the ether instead, and um, eventually we are using. Uh, we are we are uh, uh, supposed to use our aesthetic body to communicate instead of the physical, and um, he is talking about uh, that the, on the false subplane of the aesthetic plane we are communicating by uh, movement uh, and. Uh, by this third subplane, we are communicating by color. The second subplane, we are communicating uh, by sound. And the first subplane, we are communicating by light. And uh, I thought um, it was very uh, interesting. Um, just some thoughts. Thank you, Annette. Bernard, please unmute yourself. Yes, for me, uh, <clears throat> the relation with the common good uh, is the rising of uh, the power of the oneness. Uh, related with the oneness of the etheric uh, body. Thank you, Bernard. I, I would like to put the word inclusiveness amongst uh, the various ideas that are coming up. And can, could you elaborate a little bit just to expand it a bit more understanding? I think um, somebody mentioned that we should look to the needs and for the common good, I think greater understanding of inclusiveness, the ability to include everybody and every kingdom in our thoughts and our explorations is important because it's easy to leave parts of the creation out of our um, deliberations. And I think it's just the wider we can cast our, our net, the uh, more it helps the, the common good and that we should expand that thought of common as wide as we possibly can. Thank you. This is Tracy again. Um, I was thinking about what Rebecca had said. Um, what is the deeper need for the common good? And um, it came to me that healing is one of the deeper needs at this point in time. Healing in all the theme areas that we're looking at. Um, so I just wanted to put that out. And I do believe DK said that now is the time that we all should be um, healing. That's once we're healed, you know, and as we're healing, 
we can open up more and uh, and let in the new that is coming in through the Aquarian age. So we need to heal that of of Pisces and of all the past and even ancestral type things. Um, you know, not just personal, but you know, we hold a lot from our ancestral heritages and and that type of thing. So I would think one of the deeper needs right now for the common good would be healing in all these areas. Thank you. Thank you. Birgit wrote in the comments topic, bridging cleavages between people, right human relations face to face. So let us hold this space of the group reflection on the need and the common good and register any common impressions and sh let's share those uh, in the chat you can see the link to the uh, meditation for the common good questionnaire so please use that form to share your common impressions or just email us and uh, we will prepare a summary uh, that's probably we will share as a resonance board similar to what we had back in September, October to define the topics that gets most resonance from the community and we will offer those for our work in the coming uh, cycle. But already those ideas that's been shared there, I took a note of eight different ideas. They all very um, resonant and very relevant. And as we come to the closing of this time together, I just thought to bring this image of the honeycomb where the common good is the highest principle. So let's us continue our meditation as we close this meeting now. And please let us share further. Thank you and the work will continue.